All right, everybody, uh, welcome. My name is Steve Feldman. I'm executive director of the Greater Philadelphia Chapter of the Zionist Organization of America. It's wonderful to see a lot of familiar faces who uh, normally I see in person and some new faces. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is Zionism around the world. And first, I want to wish everybody a Yom Ha'atzmaet Sameach and uh, happy Israel Independence Day. I want to thank my colleagues who are helping out in the background, Alan and Natalie. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we have three of our panelists who we were expecting. We're expecting at least two more, but so far, I'm not sure where they're at. Maybe because of the time difference, there's a problem. So hopefully, um, we will have them. I want to uh, note that this webinar is sponsored by uh, Dr. Ron Warren in memory of his mother, Sophie Jenkins Warren, on the occasion of her yard site. I want to thank Dr. Warren for sponsoring tonight's event. And um, we're going to get started uh, now. We've got representatives uh, live with us from England and Uruguay and uh, Australia. Although in the interest of full disclosure, our Australia representative is actually in New York right now. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, introduce our first speaker, who is Paul Charney from the United Kingdom. Paul was elected chairman of the Zionist Federation of the United <clears throat> Kingdom in Ireland in 2012. Uh, native of South Africa, he lived for many years in Israel, where he served as an officer in the IDF Armored Corps. In 1996, Paul moved to the United Kingdom to study law at Leeds University. Uh, he's a solicitor in the city and uh, runs a land company there. He's active in the Jewish community, chairman of Mill Hill Synagogue, chairman of Technion in the UK, speaks frequently. And as I said, he's chairman of the Zionist Federation of the UK and Ireland. Paul, welcome. Hi, welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So I, I want to find out uh, from you, first of all, uh, the kinds of Zionist and pro-Israel activities that you have in the United Kingdom. So the, the, the activity ranges. Um, Zionism, like everything else, um, ranges within politics, within religion, within culture, within society. So depending on where you sit is depending on, on what event you would uh, attend. But Zionism is strong here now. Zionism has improved. Zion, brand Zionism as such has become an acceptable brand in the UK amongst the normal people, amongst the, 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 the people of Middle England. Um, whereas I would say when I started 10 years ago as uh, within the Zionist Federation, um, and before that, Zionism was a word you couldn't say in public. Um, so we've advanced we're not there yet but we're doing better i want to just interrupt you one second i see that we're joined by benny zlochisti from mexico and i think i saw ralphi gerard from india welcome gentlemen to our event two panelists uh paul what do you attribute that that improvement uh in in the way zionism is received in in the uk what is that attributable to um so Zionism has gone through a metamorphosis in, in the UK, and I, Zionism in the UK is very different to Zionism in Europe, um, such as anti-Semitism is different in, in, in Europe. So UK in, 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 in itself um, went through quite a change in understanding what Zionism was and is. Um, when, I, when I started, the, we are the largest Zionist organization and pretty much the representatives of Zionism um, in the UK, we were an umbrella body encompassing 36 other organizations. Um, when, when I started, uh, we had an exercise to understand. We went out to consultants to understand why and how we can be received better to those that don't understand Zionism, to those that are accepting BDS as the normalcy, as the, the right way to um, deal with Israel and the Palestinians. Um, so we were going through a bit of a crisis when it comes to Zionism, and the crisis was um, was bad because people were afraid to call themselves Zionists, and people never had the confidence to stand up for Israel in public. 
um, which in turn would then affect the next generation and the next generation of Jews um, and the next generation of the UK uh, would have a huge, uh, would have a detrimental effect on its relationship with Israel. And we all know how important that is, especially as we, we, as we move further and further away from the Holocaust and from Israel's creation. So that each generation needs to find its connection with Israel and Zionism. Um, so Zionism originally um, was seen as a far right political ideology for the minority, for people who, who didn't fit in with the rest of society. Um, and when I started, when we did a, a consultancy project on, on how to be better accepted, the first, <clears throat> the, first, um, uh, the first point they came back was, was you need to change your name from the Zionist Federation to something more generic. Get rid of the word Zionism. So I said, well, clearly we got the wrong consultant, number one. Right. Uh, and number two, that is the feeling at the time, that was the feeling at the time in the UK. So what we decided to do was... Um, was to try and bring um, a brand Zionism where people can identify, and all people, Middle England can identify. And in order to do that, you needed someone to stand up and say, look, you can identify with me, and I'm a Zionist, and then people will listen. And it's about, and so I, I took that upon myself, um, along with the team in the Zionist Federation, and we traveled around the country. We traveled to universities debating the worst of the worst, the greatest anti-Zionists, anti-Semites you can think of, let's debate, let's talk. Um, and when we didn't shout back at a debate and we spoke normally and we said, these are people, this is what Zionism in its very basic essence, leave the politics aside, it's got nothing to do with politics. It's about the Jewish people self-determining in the Jewish homeland. That's all it is. And, and I think when we dealt with all the different issues, people started to like, a lot of people didn't like what we had to say, but started identifying and university students could say, actually, you know what? I can identify with that. Uh, and a lot more organizations started popping up. Um, and slowly the confidence came back where Zionism was becoming an acceptable term. The term Zionism was the important thing. People had to feel free to be able to say the word Zionist in the UK, which is very different to the U US and very different other parts of, of, of the world. Um, to, to the extent we improved so much, that we celebrated the Belfort 120 years, Belfort centenary, uh, 120 years um, of Zionism, 100 years of Belfort. Right. Uh, we celebrated with Theresa May, the then Prime Minister, and Bibi, and we had a wonderful, uh, fantastic um, um, weekend of celebrations. Um, and to the extent that politicians could come out themselves and say, I'm a Zionist. And that's what folks, we would do. Excuse me. Please mute yourself, folks. Uh, Toby, especially our our guests will will unmute you as we have you. Sorry to interrupt you, Paul. Um, so, so that's what we want to do. Every time we had a politician available, we would say, "Are you a Zionist?" Mm -hmm. And we would put them on the spot. And if we 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 confine Zionism simply to the Jewish people being safe to having a homeland in the Jewish home, uh, 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 people in the Jewish homeland, then they couldn't say no. And slowly we had politicians coming out saying, well, I'm a Zionist. And the famous one was David Cameron, who said it on camera, on camera uh, um, that he, he, was, he is a Zionist. The other big shift, and I, I'm sorry I'm going on, the other big shift in, in this debate was when we started collating Zionism with anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism was a big shift for, for Zionism in the UK. Um, I th it, it became clear that there is a very gray line, that there's a huge crossover between anti-Semites using anti-Zionism simply as a, a, a whip to beat us with, simply as a stick. Um, and once that became evident and the Jewish community could stand up and say enough anti-Semitism, and when we came out with the, um, with the IHRC definition of anti-Semitism, which includes examples on how you cannot call Israel a Nazi or a, a, a genocidal state, and that's considered anti-Semitic. That crossover, um, I think, made it clear in people's minds, hold on, th there's something, this is racist, actually. This is, this is prejudice, um, being anti-Zionist, just for the sake of it. I can disagree with Israel's policies, but I can't disagree with an entire country and an entire people. Well, I want to thank you. Stick around, please. Uh, hopefully, we'll have time to come back to you uh, as we do the round robin. I want to go now to uh, Montevideo, Uruguay, uh, where Senor Sergio Oberlander is uh, is joining us now. 
Senor Oberlander is president of Karen Hayasod in Uruguay. He's graduate of the Technion, where he also received a master's degree. Uh, he's an investor and advisory board member of a number of companies, including Spotlight, Safe House, Knock Knock, and uh, Gamotic, and his background is in robotics. Welcome uh, to our broadcast, uh, Senor Oberlander. Shalom from Uruguay. And Shalom. Shalom. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I, I want to start off with the same question. Uh, tell us what kind of uh, pro-Israel and Zionist activities you and uh, the rest of the Zionist community has uh, in Uruguay and, and how it goes. Yes, I, we in Uruguay uh, are a very Zionist uh, community. Uh, we, we, have, we still have very strong uh, youth movements. So uh, every weekend, uh, almost all of the kids of the community goes to the, the youth movements. Also, we have very strong day school, J Jewish day school. So also, again, 60-70% uh, of our kids go to uh, Jewish uh, uh, day schools. Uh, and also, uh, an interesting thing, uh, uh, almost everyone here ha has a relative in Israel. Uh, uh, the Uruguayan community in Israel is bigger than the Uruguayan Jewish community in Uruguay. That means the, 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 our community is, is smaller today because a lot of our uh, uh, inter, uh, people of our community did Aliyah in the last 50, 60 years. So everyone here ha has a relative in Israel. So that makes a strong connection with Israel. Uh, and also uh, due to some programs we have in the youth movements and in the schools, and as well as birthright, I, I can tell you that uh, under 40, uh, almost everyone uh, already visit Israel at least once in his life. And that makes a, a, a big difference. So really the connection uh, 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 is very deep here with Israel. So we are proud that we are a very, very Zionist uh, community. And how does the, the Zionist and pro-Israel community get, get along with with the rest of the population? Are there any, any problems being uh, an open supporter of Israel and a Zionist in, in Uruguay? Okay, Uruguay was very friendly to Israel in the history, but now in the last 15 years, we had a leftist government. So the left uh, uh, parties, the leftist parties are, are very pro the Palestinians, are against Israel. So the last 15 years was tough every uh, incident in Israel or every problem with the Palestinians, they took the side of, of, of the Palestinians. So we feel in the, in the, in the street uh, 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 that anger against Israel. So uh, now, uh, one month ago, the government changed. We are a more centric uh, uh, government. So we believe the future will be better. But really in Latin America, when you have a, a left the government, the left in Latin America uh, is more close to Venezuela, Iran, and the Palestinians, so they are really uh, anti-Israel. So, uh, yes, uh, and also two years ago, although we have a very small, a tiny Muslim community here, one Muslim killed one Jewish in the street here. Uh, uh, so, yeah. So, we don't have very violent incidents. Uh, we can express uh, uh, our support to Israel in the street, but uh, uh, really from the side of the government, we feel uh, 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 some uh, uh, opposition against, against Israel. Although, as I mentioned before, historically, Uruguay was very friendly to Israel. <coughs> this uh, a change that happened the last uh, uh, 15 years. And I believe it's something very common in, in Latin America, like, like in Argentina or any other country that the government is, is, is left. You mentioned you have a lot of younger members and, and younger uh, pro-Israel activists in Uruguay. Uh, how do you uh, encourage them and recruit them? It's like normal, as I mentioned, our youth movements are, are strong. So it's normal that when they get to the age that they can go to the youth movement, they go. So, uh, uh, as I said, uh, I don't know, 60 or 70% of the kids here, they still go. We, we still have just seven uh, youth movements covering all the rainbow. 
So you, you can go to Bnei Akiva, that is more religious, to Betar or to Maccabi or Shomer Atzair. So everyone f f find his, his place. So, uh, and, and the, that's something <laughs> natural. We, we, we don't do too much effort really to, to get that. So that's our big advantage to, today that we still have this strong youth movement that, that uh, they, they, every weekend, they learn uh, our uh, kids about Zionism and, and, and all the history, and, and they do all the. Uh, also, when we need to, to 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 do a parade or whatever, we have them as our main support uh, to to do every activity in in favor of Israel. So we just need to keep it. We we don't need to to convince them. We need to keep what we have, and it's something that I fight. Very, very strong for that. Great, thank you. Uh, we will come back to you, I hope, uh, as time permits uh, later in the discussion. Thank you, sir. I want to introduce uh, our president, Kevin Ross, who's joining us. Uh, Kevin, hello. Hi, Steve. Uh, welcome, and uh, anything you'd like to say to, uh, to our large audience? Yeah, I, I just find it striking that no matter where you look in the world, you see that that flame you see that passion for zionism and jews no matter where they might be um they they have that abrahamitic drive to to stand up for israel and the jewish people and it is just so heartening to see that uh, while we fight very hard here in the united states to uh to promote the u.s israel relationship and to stand up for israel and the jewish people so too our fellow jews all across the country um, and, uh, and in the United States, we have uh, also wonderful uh, Christian partners here as well. And um, I would be curious to know if um, the participation of the Christian community in some of the other countries that we've touched on is, um, is as active as they are here. I can say that among the best friends that the Jewish people have here in America, is the evangelical Christian community here. They are among the, the most staunch supporters of Israel. And uh, I would love to hear from some of our participants abroad in other countries, what that looks like. And uh, is there uh, much support for Israel coming from the Gentile community? Well, we will try and, and find that out as we, as we move along the program. Thank you, Kevin. I wanna go now to, to Mumbai, India, where we're joined by Ralphie Gerard. Ralphie is chairman and executive director of the Zionist Federation of India. He first represented India at the World Zionist Congress as a youth delegate back in 1987. He's been either a delegate or alternate delegate at subsequent World Zionist Congresses ever since. He's a longtime communal leader uh, and has generated interest in Aliyah for 3,000 people from India, which is really remarkable. Uh, recently, he's been helping uh, with the equipment for the treatment of people suffering from COVID-19. Uh, Ralphie, thank you for joining us this evening. <coughs> thank you very much for your invitation. Welcome. Tell us, uh, please, about what it's like to be a, a Zionist or openly pro-Israel in India, please. I think it's uh, very natural to be Zionist in India, as India is a country where there has never been any persecution to our community over the centuries. And that is the one of the clear cut indication as to how the Jews in India are openly able to express their love for the, their forefathers land. Because we consider India as our motherland and Israel as our forefathers land. During the beginning or the turn of the 19, uh, 1900, uh, we had in community people who took initiative in setting up various Zionist organizations based in Bombay, called the Bombay Zionist Association, then in Delhi, in Calcutta, in, in uh, areas like Cochin. And these Zionist Federation finally amalgamated into the Zionist Federations of India. And the Jewish community size over the years at its peak was 35,000 Jews living in India. And this is just pre-independence of India and pre-independence of Israel because they were more or less at the similar time. Right. 
about 35,000 Jews over the last 72 years have migrated to Israel and made Aliyah. And they have now grown to a population of nearly 100,000 plus. That's amazing. It's wonderful. Yes. And what is now left in India is naturally a smaller number. 3,500 Jews still remain in India. Mm -hmm. We have three Jewish schools and we have 10 synagogues in Bombay and we have another 15 synagogues all over India. So generally speaking, the community is spread out and <clears throat> the activities of the community are of course more or less festival based and events like the Yom Azma'ut, Yom Azikaron, Yom Hashua, they are naturally observed by the community and that is very creating the strong bond between the Jews of India and the Zionist community around the world. Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, many events from your organization, many public events uh, that, that are open? So we do have events which are open to public and we do have events which are open to the community. And generally the events open to the public are very uh, kind of uh, large events where we do lectures by eminent uh, uh, politicians from India, such as Mr. Subramaniam Swami. And when he comes to speak, particularly we organize the event at the Bombay University Convocation Hall, which has a capacity of over six to 800 people sitting at one time. Wow. The situation becomes that we have to actually let people go in the top galleries because the hall downstairs is fully occupied. So the response we get to lectures of this nature, because community, not Jewish, they are very pro-Israel in India. As you already know that there is a very, very close association politically, culturally, and socially between the Jews of India and the Indian population at large and the society from Israel. And when you have your events, are there any problems? Are there any tensions? Obviously, uh, India is a very large uh, country. There's a large uh, Muslim population. Everybody gets along pretty much? Absolutely. Wonderful. We are very lucky, as many of my Israeli guests say, that we have to learn from India how to be tolerant to each other. Because when they come to Jewish compound, there are two Jewish schools. Each of them is having... 95% plus Muslim students hmm. and they are enjoying education successfully because now the population of Jews who were 100% in those schools have moved either out of those area neighborhoods or have gone to Israel. So there is absolutely a very fine relationship between the community, Jewish community in India with anybody else. And you have, I understand, a lot of uh, Israeli soldiers uh, or Israelis coming through uh, yes. India. Do you, do you ever meet with them or hear from them? Do they stop we, in to we, see you? We, we not only meet them, we welcome them. And in fact, we have here a very simple arrangement. We have an accommodation for those students from Israel or younger people who want to stay in our community. We have a place for them and it's like a guest house and we get many of them coming here uh, but many of them prefer to go to the interiors of india such as the kasoli and dharamsala and things like that and where there are very uh, very much centers to welcome them not from the jewish community but from the uh, other uh, israeli kind of centers there are organizations like bina and others who welcome them but we have also, any Jew from around the world coming to our community is welcomed on Shabbat. Very, very warmly. He is naturally welcome to join us for prayers and we host him as our guest on the Shabbat Seuda in the evening on Friday as well as on Saturday. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Please stick with us and we'll try and uh, come back to you as time allows. I want to go now to uh, Mexico and Mexico City, where joining us is Benny Zlochisti, 
who uh, is the head of the Zionist community there in Mexico. Uh, I, I do not have your bio, so I apologize, but uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, please uh, tell us about what it's like in Mexico to be uh, a Zionist and supporter of Israel. First of all, good night to everybody and shalom. Shalom. Uh, we will celebrate Yom Ma'ut 72 and it's it's joined for us in Mexico and all the world. I'm sure you are sharing with us all this happiness. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I hope my English is well. It's and, fine. Uh, better than my Spanish. <laughs> I hope so. So in Mexico, we are 40,000 Jews. And uh, we have a very active uh, community about the Zionist organization. Uh, we, we have all kinds of uh, institutions and organizations. We have Kerna Isot, Keren Kayemet. Our council, that is the Zionist council, that in other countries is the, feather, the Zionist uh, Federation. We work very, very strong with the ZOM, that means the Zionist or, uh, uh, World Organization. And uh, we work with the Department of Education. So we have in Mexico, nine schools and three years vote. You have to remember that we are only 40,000 Jews in a population of 120 million people. Mm -hmm. all, almost, almost all of them Catholic. But we have a very, very strong community about Christians. Last two years, in the past two years, I was in Israel with uh, the Prime Minister Netanyahu, and he asked us, because in Mexico, there are more than 10 million evangelist uh, people. So he, he asked us that enemies we have enough, that we need friends. And the Zionist uh, Federation, we are working hard to have very, very good relationship with the Christians and evangelists in Mexico. Uh, we invited to the, all the uh, events that we have, uh, for example, now to, to Yom Atzma'ud, Yom HaShoah, Yom HaZikaron. We have one day that we are making with all the community that it, uh, it is Yom Israel, and we also make uh, Yom Yerushalayim. In Mexico, it's very, very different than all the countries because our community, it's very, very strong, but very separate. I can tell you that, uh, for example, people that they're coming from, from Syrian countries, uh, from, the, from Syria. Yes. But there are two, two ways, two, two communities from Syria, one from Damascus and the other one from Halab. We have people that they are coming from the Balkans and Spain. We have people Ashkenazim. We have a big, big community of Ashkenazim. We have a, a conservative movement. We have a reform movement. So in 40,000 years, we have all kind of them. But we are a very strong community. We are a very active community. Especially we work hard to send uh, also our contribution to Keren Ayesot, Keren Kayemet, and uh, Badle Manahayal, and all kinds of institutions in Israel. The, the Zionist Federation is, is around the, all the, the Zionist institution and one member from each community. So it means that we are working with all, the whole community. We represent, we re represent Jewish community from Mexico to the Zionist organization in Israel. Also, I can tell you that we have small communities, one in Tijuana, that it means your, your neighbors. The other one is in Cancun, that they are coming, that they become to be a stronger community there. Another one that is from American Jewish people, that is in San Miguel de Allende, that is a beautiful resort in Mexico, and Guadalajara, Monterrey, and of course, 
Mexico City, that the most of the people live in Mexico City. We so have very, very spread out, in other words. Very, very active uh, Jewish life we have. Good. We have, I can tell you, more than 50 synagogues and uh, uh, with, with kolelitos, with kol kolelim. So it's very, very uh, Jewish life. And, and when you decide to have uh, some of these pro-Israel events that you described, uh, is the turnout good? Is, there, is it uh, support from the wider community? Yes, yes. Uh, the support is from, from our community and, and uh, of course from all the communities in Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, we we love we they we love to make that, and we start from the basic education in Mexico. We have very good relationship with all the schools, so we start with the Zionist organization uh, education from the young people. Also, I can tell you that uh, in Mexico we have Fidonacionut, that it's not in all the whole, in the, the world. I think there is in, uh, in uh, Uruguay and in, in Mexico, only, only in Latin America. Hmm. And uh, do you uh, have younger, uh, are the younger members of your community uh, pro-Israel or getting into Zionism or is that, is that difficult to recruit younger people? No, no, the, 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 the youth movements, the Zionist youth movements there, very, very strong, very popular now in Mexico. Good. And, uh, and, and we have a, a, a high percentage that they, they, they go to Aliyah also. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you also that uh, uh, we have very good relationship with the all Latin American people. And uh, well, Mexico is uh, one of the heads in Latin America. Thank you, Senora. We will uh, try to get back to you as, as the event goes forward. Thank you. Uh, I want to now you. go um, to, the, to Noah Block, who is the Chair of Public Affairs for the Zionist Federation of Australia. She's a former foreign policy fellow at the World Jewish Congress. And in the interest of full disclosure, she's joining us from New York City. Welcome. Uh, welcome to our event this evening. Hi, thank you for having me, and Chagat Sameach, everybody. Thank you. Uh, tell us what the community is like in uh, in Australia in terms of pro-Israel activity and Zionist events that you have. Yeah, sure. So I thought I should just kind of level set a little bit about the Jewish community in Australia, because I'm Please. assuming people aren't familiar with it. Um, and then I can also talk briefly about the Zionist Federation of Australia and the work that we do. Yes. yes. Uh, so I'm from Melbourne. Uh, in Australia, we have... a a, a very large and vibrant Jewish community. We have um, we, we have a we have a very um, comprehensive survey that's done approximately every nine to ten years. Um, the, the most recent one was in 2017. It was called the Gen 17 Survey, um, and a lot of the statistics on the community we we get from that survey it gives us some really rich data on our community. So, according to that survey, our community currently is estimated to be somewhere between 113,000 Jews and 140,000 Jews, and we're spread out throughout Australia. Um, our community is, is deeply Zionist and there's certainly a very strong connection to Israel. In that survey, approximately 92% of people said that they'd visited Israel once and 60% had visited three or more times, which is pretty incredible considering that it's an over 20 hour flight from Australia to, to <laughs> Israel. Uh, you know, about 80% of, it, it definitely does. Um, definitely not for the faint hearted. <laughs> Uh, we have, you know, uh, the seven Zionist youth movement. We have seven Zionist youth movements that are active across the country. Um, many, many Jewish day schools, and our Aliyah rate is 0.13%, um, which just kind of to, to level set. Um, my understanding is that in the U.S. that it's half of a percent. So um, definitely, Australia has um, a very large proportion of people that are making Aliyah. Uh, in terms of the Zionist Federation of Australia, uh, which I'm involved in, uh, we're the roof, um, roof representative body of Zionist organisations in Australia. We have um, six affiliate state council organisations and either directly or indirectly through our different affiliates, there are about 150 discrete Zionist organisations that fall within our, within our span. 
Uh, we are the representatives of uh, the Jewish Agency for Israel in Australia, the World Zionist Organization, um, Dilla Team Fellows, if people are familiar with that organization, Taglit, um, and we, we offer a, a full range of activities from our main office. So it ranges from uh, political um, advocacy and Israel advocacy, which is what I'm involved in, um, different Zionist seminars and shluchim from the Jewish agency. Uh, we support the Zionist youth movements. Um, we do a lot of education and we also support different parts of our community. So for example, um, there's a very uh, significant Russian speaking population in Australia and also a very large Israeli population. And we have programming for all of those different groups as well. So um, I'll pause there, but um, the Australian Jewish community is, is incredibly, um, we may be small and we're far away, but um, as I've always kind of, I was always brought up knowing that we very much punch above our weight um, in terms of our uh, contribution to Israel or our support for Israel. And what kinds of events uh, do you have in Australia uh, to celebrate Israel, to, to talk about Zionism, encourage Zionism? Do you have uh, many events and how did they go? Yeah, we have, um, we have many events. I mean, just to kind of give you, give you a sense of um, the broad spectrum, because we really cater to a lot of people. So, you know, all of our, all of our state designers councils will host lots of events for the, the main, um, the main events in the Israeli calendar. So Yom HaShoah, Yom HaZikaron, Yom HaZmaut. Um, we also have a, a lot of, uh, events around political engagement and advocacy. So um, as, um, as recently as last year, we actually sent a delegation of very senior um, Australian former prime ministers and senior ministers in Australian government to, um, to Israel. And they met with uh, many of uh, many senior stakeholders in Israel, including um, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Rivlin. Uh, we host an annual education conference, which brings together educators from all over Australia um, to discuss Israel and Zionism and Judaism and how to, how to educate more effectively on those topics. Uh, our Zionist youth movements have camps twice a year. Uh, you know, in 2000, uh, you know, recently our camps attracted about 2,000 uh, 2, kids and 400 who are volunteers. Uh, so you can, and we have lots of other kind of cultural events. I mean, you know, there'd be, thousands throughout the year. So really, I mean, from small to large scale, we really offer uh, quite a spectrum. Mm -hmm. And how are they received in the community? Uh, they, are they warmly received by people outside of the Jewish community? Are there any tensions or is every, everything pretty uh, copacetic? Yeah, so in terms of um, in terms of the relationship between the Jewish community and the larger community and just how easy it is to be a Zionist, I would say that I'm very blessed to have grown up in a country where I can say it's never been a problem for me to be a Zionist. Uh, you know, often the, the great litmus test is often going to university campuses and ultimately, you know, obviously there's going to be people that are, um, are not supportive of Israel, but I would say by and large, I was always very confident to be and to be a proud Zionist campus when I was studying. I think that, um, so I think there's, you know, three really key takeaways about, you know, Zionism in Australia and the degree which it is easy and proud to be a Zionist. The first is that um, we're coming from a, the Australian Jewish community is per capita got the largest concentration of Holocaust survivors outside of Israel. Hmm. And so um, the focus on Israel and the focus and the centrality of Zionism within our education systems and then how we relate um, and how that has kind of seeped through our education, how we relate with the larger Australian Jewish community has really been central. Um, I am often reminded um, on Yama Smalot, my grandmother, who was a child survivor of Bergen Belsen, always used to say to us on Yama Smalot, you know, uh, you don't know what it's like to live in a world without an Israel. And so really kind of, it's really a, a blessing and you should not be taking that for granted. And to the I question that- That, that I, is something that- I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I'm that, so that's something. So the first, um, the first one I was going to say is that that's something that is very um, common amongst Australian Jews and how we relate. Um, and it's, it's, it's very important. And it, it really does guide us in a lot of um, our, uh, the way we can talk about Zionism, but also more importantly, Judaism and Jewish identity. Um, and second, uh, the second is that there is a, a very strong history of Israel being a bipartisan issue. And, so, you know, in 1947, actually, the um, 
the gentleman that chaired the the vote in the United uh, the UN General Assembly was Doc Evatt, who was a um, a former leader of the Australian Labor Party, the Progressive Party in Australia. Um, and when President Rivlin visited Australia earlier um, earlier this year, he met with representatives from both sides of the aisle. And so Australia has a very strong history of having of it, of Israel being bipartisan. And thankfully, we, we don't take that for granted, and we we continue to build on that. Um, and third, I would say that. Um, Israel is like a very central part of Jewish identity in Australia because, and that as a consequence has helped um, bridge our relationships with, with other communities and to, and to really stress the importance of Israel. So um, as I mentioned, we have many different Jewish day, Zionist Jewish day schools um, and you know, a, a, over 50% of people in Australia attend a Jewish day school, which, it, which is pretty remarkable. And you know, our Zionist youth movements, over 70% of people have attended the Zionist youth movement in their childhood. And, all, you know, all of this, I think, contributes to the fact that Israel is central to who we are. Um, it's very much the lifeblood of our, of our Jewish community. And that then does, that helps us, you know, communicate that message to people outside our community. And to um, Kevin's point about um, our relationships with other communities, um, I was, I was, we definitely do a lot of work with other faith groups and also um, different racial and religious groups. Um, for example, I was on a part of a delegation to Canberra, capital city, with a uh, with a, a large group of Christian um, supporters of Israel from many different um, many different um, parts of the Christian community, and so they're, they're definitely supportive in um, our advocacy efforts, along with many other groups as well. That's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, I want to uh, do a, a lightning round, a speed round with our panelists, if we if we can. Uh, the same question to everybody: Are you are you optimistic between about the relationship between uh, your country and Israel going forward? Do you think things will will stay well or, or be be good or uh, or not? So well, let's go back to Paul in uh, in England. Paul, uh, are you optimistic about the future of uh, British and uh, Israel relations? Absolutely optimistic. The bilateral, tr bilateral trade between the UK and Israel has grown exponentially year on year, uh, particularly the tech and biomedical sectors. Uh, business in UK know that they need it. When you, when you go to one of the largest universities in the UK, the London School of Economics, and you tell them non-Jews, non-Zionists, non-Israelis, we're doing a trip to the Technion, who would like to join? you'll have 100 participants signing in immediately. And that's a great, great brand for Israel, all, 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 the, um, all the business side of things. The, the other thing is we have, I have to say, the great relationship um, that has been built on between the UK and Britain is, is thanks to our famous Australian ambassador to the, um, to the UK, Mr. Mark Regev, who I work very closely with, who was a fantastic ambassador, as well as our previous ambassador, who was British. Um, so absolutely optimistic, um, only getting stronger and stronger. And I worked very closely with Mark when he was uh, the prime minister's spokesman. We spoke very, very frequently. Good man. Uh, let's go back to uh, Uruguay. Senior Oberlander, are you optimistic uh, about the relationship between uh, your country and Israel and, and the community there? Yes, I believe Paul mentioned something very important. Um, Bibi Netanyahu was doing that the last years, not only with the Western countries, also with the Arabian countries, regarding promoting Israel technology to the world. Really, all the countries in the world uh, want to be in contact with Israel technology. So, whatever is a, a lecture from uh, a, a university from Israel or some technology exchange or whatever. So, that's something very positive in our relation with Israel. In the other side, as I mentioned, today the relation between countries and mainly between Israel and, and other countries in, Latin, in the world is more political. So it depends very much on which color do you have at the moment with the country. Today in, our, in Latin America, if we have a leftist government, they will be mainly against Israel. That's, that's an issue. But also, leftist government, they want to have this uh, technology connection with Israel. So it's, it's an interesting mixing. Thank you. And let's go back to India. Ralphie, uh, are you optimistic about relations between uh, India and Israel and uh, the pro-Israel community in your country? Actually, India and Israel have been having uh, very symbiotic relationships in many fields, including agriculture, defense, diamond trade, and technology. So today, India and Israel 
geographically are very well connected and the traffic of uh, people traveling from both the countries is ever increasing. There are almost uh, flights daily from Delhi and there are three, thrice a week flights from Bombay. There are now flights from Cochin, there are flights from Goa. So the relationship between India and Israel is booming, booming. Wonderful. So much so that uh, politically also they are very friendly and very close. Plus people to people relationships are absolutely ever uh, increasing and becoming stronger. That's wonderful to hear. And let's go back to Mexico, Senor Zlochisti. Uh, how is, uh, are you optimistic about the relationship between the two countries going forward? Well, we, even that we have a left uh, government now, that is very popular government. My screen has frozen. Uh, I hope uh, we're still on. Yes, okay. And, and of course, we, we have the, um, how you say in English, uh, we have many cultural also uh, relationship between Israel and, and Mexico. Uh, the embassy of Israel in Mexico have a lot of work. They work a lot of uh, uh, selling a lot of security uh, staff to Mexico. And uh, I have to tell you that, for example, Netapim, that it was uh, two years ago an Israeli company, now is a Mexican company. They buy 90% of Netapim in the world that it means that uh, they pay more than two billion uh, uh, dollars, uh, million dollars for Netafim in Mexico, a private company from, uh, from a bank. It's a big and, investment. Uh, for me? That's a big investment. It was a, a big investment that uh, all the money goes to Israel. That's uh, especially to, to tell and uh, the family that buys that was the family Del Valle. Now the Netafim company, it is uh, Mexchem. That's the name of the, of the company, the new company. But uh, they have all the technology and, and all the agriculture uh, culture to make a better, uh, uh, better agriculture in the, in the world. Thank you. And back to Australia. Noah, are you uh, optimistic about the relationship between uh, Israel and Australia and uh, the pro-Israel community? Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely confident. Uh, I think that we're very blessed that we've got a lot of support, like I said, on both sides of the aisle. And I think um, more broadly, our community continues to grow um, in both, you know, in, in its activities and in its vibrancy. Having said that, I think that like any Zionist community around the world, I think that we can't take that for granted. I think there are really two, um, two things that, you know, both I think in Australia, but also more broadly, the global diaspora community, um, we, we need to do in order to ensure that stays the same. Um, first, I think we, we need to ensure that Israel remains a bipartisan issue. And I think that there have been, um, you know, there have been fears of that changing in certain parts of the world, but thankfully in Australia we've ma maintained that. And I think that in order to maintain that strong connection, it has to maintain, um, remain a bipartisan issue politically. And secondly, and this is something that um, I think a lot of different organisations have grappled with is shifting the conversation away from the, um, you know, Arab Israeli Palestinian Israeli conflict um, and focusing also on the contributions that um, Israel makes to the global stage, be it, you know, to the environment, technology, um, the list goes on. And I think that in order to ensure that we continue um, to grow as a diaspora community and to support Israel, uh, those, two, those two factors really need to be considered. Great. Uh, panelists and, and those watching our audience, if you would please indulge uh, us for a minute, we're going to make an announcement. I'm going to do a screen share and we'll have an announcement. This uh, event has been sponsored by Dr. Dr. Ron Warren in memory of his mother, Sophie Jenkins Warren, uh, on the occasion of her yard site. May her memory be for a blessing. And uh, Ron, I know you're watching and thank you for supporting this event this evening. Uh, also, uh, if you want to get in touch with either the Greater Philadelphia Chapter of ZOA 
or national ZOA. Here's the information if you'd like to uh, jot it down. It's office at ZOA Philly is our email and our website is www.philly.zoa.org. And if you'd like to, to make a donation, we would greatly appreciate that. And for those outside of the greater Philadelphia area, if you want to get in touch with National ZOA, it's info at zoa.org or www.zoa.org. And you can make a donation there as well to support all of our activities. Thank you. I want to uh, thank our guests for joining us this evening uh, and morning, depending on where you're, where you're joining us from. Thank you. I uh, wish you all a Yom HaAtzmat Sameach and uh, continued strength as you, as you go from strength to strength in your pro-Israel uh, activities and events uh, in your respective countries. Thank you very much.